Doggone begins with Fielding, a young college student, lamenting a recent breakup. To lift his spirits, he ends up adopting and naming a dog from the pound. Donker grew up on the Virginia University campus. He accompanied Fielding to parties and even yoga classes. Fielding always wanted Gonker to have access to his wild side, so he kept him off the leash. When his parents traveled to his university to attend his graduation ceremony, they learned about Gonker. His father, John Marshall, mocked his decision to adopt a dog at a time when he had no idea what he wanted to do with his life. Fielding attributed his enjoyment of his college years to Gonker, and he would not have had it any other way. Fielding was concerned about his future, and listening to his friends discuss their job offers didn't help. He enjoyed adventure sports but wasn't sure if he could ever make a living from them. He spent his final day on campus with Gonker doing everything they enjoyed doing together. He had no regrets about missing his graduation ceremony, much to his parents' dismay. After college, he returned to the suburbs with his parents, where he was introduced to the house rules. Of course, his parents were unable to maintain their strict demeanor due to Gonker's adorableness. Those who had never wanted a dog in their home were now relishing every moment with Gonker. Ginny spoiled him with food and affection after he became his fetch buddy. While his parents enjoyed Gonker's company, they were concerned about their son. Fielding's father, John, wished for him to mature into a responsible adult, and he struggled to accept that his son was taking a break to figure out his life. Fielding's transition from carefree college life to being out in the world to make a living was difficult, and the growing urgency to find work did get to him. Meanwhile, Gonker appeared drowsier than usual one afternoon. He didn't greet Jenny when she got home, and his food bowl was still full. He was rushed to the pet hospital, where it was discovered that he had Addison's disease. The vets weren't sure if Gonker would survive the night, but the next morning, he was back to his usual playful self. Fielding was reminded of the enormity of being a dog parent by Gonker's sudden illness. Fielding accompanied Nate on the Appalachian Trail, and he brought Gonker with him. He was untethered and went into the woods to chase a fox. Gonker had always returned when called, no matter how far he had gone. But this time was different. Even after calling him several times and venturing deep into the forest, Gonker was nowhere to be found. Fielding returned home and informed his parents, and the next morning they began their extensive search for their beloved son. Doggone ending explained, did the marshals find Gonker? When Gonker went missing, Ginny was taken back to her childhood. She used to have a dog named Oji, which she lost in an accident, according to her parents. Her parents were strict and lacked affection. They disliked Oji's presence and refused to let him into the house, even when it was snowing heavily outside. Ginny was young at the time, and she didn't have the means to find Oji, but this time she wasn't about to give up. She gathered phone books and called every pet hospital, shelter, and media outlet she could think of to spread the word about Gonker. They needed to find Gonker within the next 23 days because he would die if he didn't get his monthly shot. Gonker's story was published in newspapers, and it touched many people's hearts. People took the initiative to spread the word about him, and flyers were distributed throughout the neighborhood. Meanwhile, John and Fielding went on a thorough search along the Appalachian Trail. They came to a number of dead ends, leaving them exhausted and frustrated. During their search for Gonker, John realized that while his son was struggling to find his way, he was responsible enough to prioritize finding Gonker even when he was physically exhausted. He was proud of the man his son had grown into, a gentle and sensitive soul. After days of searching for Gonker, the marshals decided it was time to call it quits. They were becoming physically and emotionally exhausted. Fortunately, they were notified within a few hours that a dog matching the description of Gonker was at the Evergreen Lodge in Nellisford. The marshals knew it had to be Gonker when the man on the phone mentioned the dog showing him a donut trick. Fielding called out to them as they drove down to the lodge. Gonker dashed towards him from the woods. They were finally reunited with their best friend. Fielding collapsed on the ground as soon as John and Fielding safely returned Gonker home. He'd been sick for months and in excruciating pain, but he chose to ignore it in order to concentrate on finding Gonker. He was taken to the hospital, where his parents discovered he had ulcerative colitis. Fielding began to recover after the successful surgery. He struggled to sleep without Gonker by his side, despite the doctor's advice. John had the perfect solution. He snuck Gonker into the hospital, and Fielding was overjoyed to have his friend by his side. Despite the fact that he was in pain and couldn't eat anything, Fielding was determined to find Gonker. John used to wonder if his son lacked determination and a sense of responsibility, but he was proven wrong. Fielding's decision to adopt Gonker was one of the best decisions he ever made. What is the true story behind the film? Gonker Marshall was lost on the Appalachian Trail in 1998. Gonker had Addison's disease, as depicted in the film, and the Marshall family had only 23 days to find their dog because he would not survive without his monthly shot. Ginny concentrated on contacting shelters, community centers, and newspaper houses while John and Fielding Marshall searched for Gonker. Soon after, a community of dog lovers began looking for Gonker. Ginny had a dog named Oji in real life, and he was her support system during her childhood years. Losing him was traumatic for her, which is why tracking down Gonker became a priority for her. When writer Paul Stautangi, John and Ginny's son-in-law, was told about the incident, he realized the family's emotional connection to the story of finding Gonker. He had intended to give the book to his family for Christmas, but it ended up being published. 
The journey of Dog Gone began when writer, producer Nick Santero pitched it to Netflix. The Marshall family made certain that Gonker was never separated from them again after losing him once. Fielding also offers kayaking tours in Chile, in keeping with his adventurous spirit. Dog Gone is an emotional journey. It's not just about finding a lost dog, but also about the deeper emotional impact it had on the family, from helping Ginny recover from childhood regret to making John understand his son better than ever. While losing Gonker was an emotional roller coaster for the family, there was a happy ending. Thanks for watching, and if you are new to our channel, subscribe and click the bell icon so you do not miss out on our latest videos.